G'day, Hugh here from videsign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia, and thank you for joining me. Today I thought we'd hop into Camera Raw in Photoshop and use the grayscale mix panel to create uh, stunning black and white photos by isolating specific colours. So even though it's a black and white photo, you can actually tweak colours to create effects in that black and white photo, so you don't have a flat grey looking photo. It serves very much contrast between black and white and uh, different uh, tones within those blacks and whites. So let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's done. Okay, so we have here a long exposure photo. At the five second photo, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty nice, but it's got a lot of uh, obviously dark and white in it, so it will lend itself to be a very good black and white photo. But before we actually even go down the path of turning it into a monochrome image, uh, we'll just do a bit of work on the image itself uh, as you would normally, and that's uh, we'll bring down the highlights and open up the shadows so that it's an automatic improvement to the image. Um, we'll just uh, a little bit white and put a, cr crush the blacks a bit and add a little bit of clarity to it and a bit of vibrance. Now we normally always add in the vibrance it doesn't really matter here because it's going to become uh, monochromatic anyway. Now what you could do is just go grab your saturation slider and go bang turn it into black and white and say well that's pretty good I mean you could then sort of uh, play around with the exposure and the contrast uh, we've already done the highlight shadows whites and blacks you know you could uh, do a bit more work on the whites and a bit more on the blacks um, yeah and, and boost the clarity and say well that's a pretty cool black and white photo which you know that is pretty cool but it isn't the way to, to really do it because uh, it's just uh, creating a lot of greys and uh, we don't want that so we'll put the saturation back to, to zero back to a properly saturated image put the exposure back to zero as well and the contrast contrast back to zero and keep the whites and blacks you know where we had them and the clarity around the same and what we'll come up to now is go up to the uh, HSL slash grayscale button, grayscale, and hit hit it, and then click on convert to grayscale. So that does everything for you in one hit. Okay, so we don't just want to keep it out like that though. So what we want to do now we can ha have auto here and, and default. Now default puts it all back to zero. Auto gives you a bit of a, uh, a w automatic workaround on your image. But for this purposes, I think we'll stick with uh, default and do our own adjustments rather than allow it to just be auto. So now we can manually adjust the sliders and lighten spe specific areas and create more contrast where it's needed. Um, obviously there's lots of uh, plants and stuff in this scene and um, they can you know, tend to have you know greens and yellows in them so we'll just drag the the green uh, the, the yellows up a bit to the, to the right and the greens as well Which, you know for plants uh, they tend to have those colors predominantly in them so that will reveal more texture in those images now we can also come up to a target adjustment a brush this one here which one have we got here and uh, choose specific areas in the image to target so like the water here we can click on it and slide up and you can see it, it's working on the yellows there you choose the darker area the greens and yellows move a little bit too and then you've got like the whiter areas which increases the aqua and then you know you can choose a different part of the image there where the greens and the yellows again get worked on 
and if we come into sort of this area here, reds and oranges either go up or down, so you can you can just sp very sp sp specifically adjust different parts of your image. And that gives you a, a lot of control over your blacks and your whites. So it's not just a washed out grey that like when you brought down the the saturation you can really just target different areas and and all these sliders can then also be adjusted you can you know work on the blues the purples and the magentas all of that can be very specifically adjusted okay well we definitely have changed the look here from that to that and it's a pretty cool looking black and white photo so what we'll do now is we'll open the image and it will open up in Photoshop. And this is where we'll do the, f the, the final touches to the image. And uh, like we did in a previous uh, tutorial, we'll duplicate the layer. So now we have got two layers identical. And on the top layer selected, we'll come up to filter and go back into camera raw. So it's identical to what we have in Photoshop, but we're going to reduce the size so that we have got a lot of grey area around the image. We'll come up to graduated filter, click below it, and give it a really strong amount of detail. Now it's at 100% clarity. We'll start at zero and we'll bring it up to about 50 or thereabouts. So that is pretty strong. And we'll say OK to that. Right, so that's really created a very contrast now look with a, a lot of detail. So what we'll do now is we'll add a mask. So we'll come down to a layer mask and that has given uh, the mask onto the, the layer that we're actually going to be working on, which is our detail layer. Uh, it's white, so we need black to be the foreground. We need to have a brush selected. And we'll remove the extreme detail from the areas that uh, we don't want it showing up. So pretty much in the vegetation areas in the background. Like so, we'll just brush away. And just give a little bit of a look as far as the... Uh, the water goes so it's not as, as sharp which is uh, you know the softer water is the, the hallmark of a little long exposure it's like mist almost and we'll just add a bit in there now if we switch it on and off we can see before we've added the detail and after we've added the detail now we can just reduce the opacity to a degree so we bring it all the way down and when, once it uh, renders that we can see it's back to our actual image here no change so with the opacity we can just bring it up to a level that uh, we're happy with and it all comes down to your own judgment what you think looks good and what could uh, what could be improved so now we've got a lot of detail now, you know, in the rocks and our grass, all our foreground elements. We don't need as much in the background. So I'd, I'd bring this up to around 60%. And uh, we'll just switch it on and off and have a look at the differences. So, you know, we can come back in and do a few little adjustments here and there. So anything that we want to, uh, that we've done that we might actually want to reverse, we can just change the colors around and so the white's foreground, black is background, and that will erase any adjustments that we've done. And again, switch it around if you want to do a little few spot removals here and there. 
So we can look at the before and after. So what we might just do here is come into filter, camera or filter, and just come down to, or we'll go to, um, uh, we'll come to effects and uh, put in the vignette because it is black and white. And you really do need a vignette in a black and white photo. So that is uh, at minus 100% amount and uh, completely feathered to zero. Uh, so no feathering at all. So we'll bring the amount back to a, a nice sort of amount and then feather, feather it back in, yeah, up towards 40-ish. Uh, and then we can just have a look at the difference between having it on and off. So we just want it to be in there. And we say OK to that. So there's our black and white photo. Highly detailed. There's, you know, it's, uh, it's got a lot of uh, elements to it which are black and white rather than just greys elements of greys. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's nicely balanced exposure wise. It looks like, a, it does look like it's been shot on black and white film really. It's, you know, when you look at the, the background here and, and all, all the whites and, and the greys and the blacks, it is, it is a nicely balanced photo. And putting that uh, vignette in has just uh, topped off the, uh, the look. So, uh, using Camera Raw's uh, uh, Convert to Grayscale, it really does allow you to create really good looking black and white images. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and um, learned something from it. If you have, I'm very happy. So please join me next time and until then, I will see you later.